Uh, lots to pick up on about the COVID outlook with distinguished epidemiologist, friend of the show, Professor John Edmonds. John, very good to see you. Um, we go into autumn, as Anushka just pointed out, with infections, hospitalisations, deaths, multiples of where they were this time last year. How much further upward pressure should we expect to see from people returning to work, kids back at school, people spending more time indoors as the weather gets colder? Yeah, well, all of those effects are going to have, uh, well, an effect, of course, um, and uh, they're all going to put upward pressure, you would expect, on, on the numbers of cases. Um, and I think Anushka is absolutely right to pick up on prevalence there. Prevalence now is much, much higher than it was at the same time last year, and you can look at the effect that school close, schools opening and universities returning, and people going back to work had it did pick up, the, the, the epidemic did pick up, you know, in autumn of last year, and you would expect something similar. Now, obviously, there's countervailing forces, the fact that many of us, most of us, the vast majority of us have been vaccinated, most of us have had two jabs, and so, and so that will um, slow that, uh, so slow any increase. But I think if we look, for instance, at Scotland, then we can see uh, around the time when schools have opened, um, then there's been a a fairly rapid increase in cases, although that has settled and actually mm -hmm. started to fall a little bit now, which is good news, actually. So I think I think it's unclear exactly where um, this is going to go. Um, I don't think any of us expect the numbers of cases to fall immediately. Um, and so, you know, the pressure will be uh, probably some increase in cases now in the in the coming weeks, which will inevitably results in increases in hospitalizations and, so, and unfortunately deaths as well. So why not bear down with some suppressive measures straight away? Well, I guess that's a political decision, isn't it? You have to weigh these things up against um, people's freedoms and, uh, and the economy and, and so on and so forth. So, um, and, you know, people are still behaving quite cautiously, actually. Um, so although um, so many people are still working from home, I'm still working from home. I think many people are. And I think that will um, help to keep a lid on, on any increase that might occur. Um, so I, I do think, um, so you, you don't necessarily have to take uh, anything, any, any radical action. I think no. you can uh, see how this pans out. It is very difficult to predict where this epidemic might go now. We're not in control of it in the same way that we were before um, and so we are allowing the epidemic to run to some extent uh, and in which case it's it's inherently a little bit more uh, more difficult to to predict it can, can i ask um what something which really intrigued me uh, listening to patrick valance and chris witty yesterday is they both said that um actually measures like the plan b that the Prime Minister has announced, so vaccine passports, mandatory mask wearing, um, perhaps recommendations to do more working from home. They all said that these would have very significant impacts on the rate of infection were they introduced. But compared to the kind of measures that we're, we were using only a few months ago, they seem relatively trivial. Why would they have relatively more impact now? We don't expect the reproduction number to get very high um, because of the effect of vaccination. So um, you can see what it is and has been in Scotland. It's been somewhere somewhere between about 1.3 uh, and 1.5. It's in that region. And, if, and so if uh, the reproduction number is as low as that, then these slightly lesser measures have relatively more effect. Is that is that the argument? Yeah, so to bring it back down to one, um, you don't need so such drastic measures to bring it back down to one if it's not going to get, or, or below one, of course, below one is mm. much better. But um, so you don't need such drastic measures to do that. Also, if you look where infections actually are at the moment, they're obviously mostly in younger individuals. So if you take measures that affect uh, younger individuals um, more so, then you would expect to have a bigger impact um, through those sorts of measures. So perhaps the, um, you know, I think that's one of the arguments for the uh, vaccine passporting.
And now, the other thing which uh, the government has said is that in the end, any new measures will be determined by the degree of pressure on the health service. Um, now, my presumption is that when they talk about that, you've also got to take into account what's happening with other respiratory illnesses like flu. It's presumably not just about what happens with COVID this winter. Yeah, exactly. So we've missed out on uh, epidemics of many other uh, viral infections uh, over the last year or so because the restrictions that we've been under have prevented the spread of those. And so um, now that we've eased the restrictions and kids are back in school and so on, then we would expect to see those uh, cases coming back. And, and it may well be that we'll get more severe epidemics than, um, than we have than we would normally get just because we've missed out on a year. So we kind of get, there's more susceptibles in the population and so you may get more cases. So that's certainly true for some of the uh, viral infections. It's less true for flu, interestingly enough, just because we vaccinate against flu. And of course we vaccinated last, last year against flu. Um, and so the change in susceptibility is, is less probably for flu than it is for some of the other viruses. But yes, all of it is, is a worry. Health service is full, full anyway and trying to, very busy at the moment, trying to um, cope with the backlog um, of cases, uh, you know, of, of other case, um, other treatments. And so you add the, that and you add these uh, other in, infections which we might expect to see in the coming weeks and months. And COVID, I think it will be very busy for the, for the health service for the coming months. Now, John, um, we've got to take a short break, but I do want to ask you about the booster programme and the, uh, the whole debate about how fast perhaps immunity from vaccines is, is waning. So uh, if, you, if you could stay with us, I'd be grateful. And um, I say, come back and rejoin us for more gripping stuff in just a minute or two. Uh, welcome back. Uh, John Edmonds is still with me. Um, John, I just wanted to sort of talk to you, first of all, about a sort of self-safeguarding sort of behaviours that we've been following. I was slightly struck, I don't know if you saw this, the Health Secretary, Sajid Javid, uh, was asked why the Cabinet, well, you know, they were all crowded into a room almost sitting on each other's laps and they weren't wearing masks. And he said, that's absolutely fine because, you know, we all know each other uh, and you only have to wear masks when you're with strangers. Do you, do you reckon that's right? No. <laughs> um, I mean, you're most likely, of course, to catch infections from people you know. Um, so, so your advice to him another time is um, to put a mask on if he's with that rather rum bunch of people. Um, you know, I think if you're spending a significant period of time, particularly in a crowded, um, poorly ventilated setting um, with other individuals, I think it's wise to wear a mask. Now, where are you on this issue of how rapidly... Uh, you know, the, the vaccination effectiveness, efficacy is, is waning. Because um, there seems to be actually not completely straightforward evidence on all of this. Yeah, um, that's true. Uh, I, think, I think if you look very carefully at the PHE report, um, which is really detailed, and um, I think it's been a fantastic piece of work that they've been doing over the last few months. Uh, and, you know, so that's... That's probably the best piece of evidence we've got anywhere, I think, uh, on the efficacy of the vaccines. It's really well done. And of course, it's a, it's a national study, so it's huge numbers of people that are vaccinated. And, you know, there's various things you can pick up from it. So, um, you know, efficacy of the vaccines against the Delta variant is a bit lower than, than it is um, against, uh, it was against the Alpha variant, unfortunately. Um, and it does decline after the second dose. You can see that in the, uh, you know, in, in the in the report. Does but it, it's, does it you know, decline it, enough it, to warrant an immediate rollout of of the boosters? Well, I think I think the ones you really want to be looking at are, uh, decline in efficacy against severe disease, hospitalisation, and mm. death. Uh, and there, the, the rate of decline is definitely less, unquestionably mm. less than just against mild disease. Um, but it still does seem to be declining somewhat. And unfortunately, it's declining most in the most at-risk individuals. So in those who've got pre-existing conditions and are elderly, then you can see that the rate, uh, the vaccine efficacy is declining faster in those 
than it is in, in, in otherwise healthy and younger individuals. So I think it's pretty clear for the high risk in, highest risk individuals, you really do want to um, boost their immune uh, immunity now. Uh, it's less straightforward for um, you know uh, less high risk adults, but I think um, it's probably wise to also uh, give them a booster. Other things being equal. But do you have sympathy with people like Sarah Gilbert or certain World Health Organization scientists who think that actually we'd be better off uh, redeploying, when I say we, I just mean the rich West, redeploying vaccines to poorer countries, particularly countries in Africa, where vaccination rates are just terribly low, rather than giving, you know, uh, you know people like us uh, third doses? You can do both. And I think the sort of scandal is that we haven't, um, you know, so I don't think I don't think it's the right way to go about it in, in you know, sort of hand me downs to, hmm. uh, you know, uh, less well off countries. I think we should we should be manufacturing enough vaccine for all of us, every single one of us across the planet. And I think that that for me, that's the scandal that we haven't put, uh, uh, you know, enormous effort into that. Um, uh, so, you know, we've, these vaccines have been around now for some consider, you know, for some months, and I, I really do think that that we should be, you know, striving uh, to make sure that people across the globe are vaccinated. And, we, and, we, and, and just on another group, just finally, finally, we're almost out of time. Twelve to fifteen-year-olds. Um, I suppose two questions: How important is it that they do get vaccinated, and um, how worried are you that they probably won't, given that the initial uh, advice from the government's advisory body didn't look, uh, you know, it looked a bit equivocal. Yeah, I, that that does worry me somewhat. That uh, that it might be a struggle to get high coverage in that age group, and that age group is quite important from um, from a transmission point of view. It's quite important, um, uh, but uh, you know, it's important for them. It's the most important. You know, that's the that's the critical aspect. I, I think if you do take into account the wider aspects. Um, you know, actually, I've got one of my own daughters has got COVID at the moment, so you know, and she's off school again, and and, and you know, that's you know, this is really uh, damaging to kids' uh, educational you know achievements over the last year or two, and I just don't see any reason for, the, for that to carry on. I think it would be better if we vaccinated them, and then uh, and then they could get on with things. But I think one of the problems is. You know, it takes some time for, you know, well, one dose doesn't offer great protection, as we know, against the Delta virus. And so um, I'm not sure that this is going to really turn the tide of the epidemic, uh, just giving a single dose initially, at least, to, to sort of 12 to 15 year olds. That's not going to that's not going to be the, 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 the straw that breaks the epidemic's camel's back, you know, to mix my metaphors. Um, you know, I do think we'll get a quicker reaction, actually. From um, from vaccinating, uh, you know, from giving booster doses, that should give an immediate uh, boost to those who receive them, and I think that that will uh, elevate the level of immunity in the population much quicker, in fact, uh, than than uh, uh, to a larger extent than okay. vaccinating 12 to 15 year olds. John, as always, thank you so much for joining us, and we, we, I obviously wish your daughter a very speedy recovery, and um, look forward to speaking to you again soon.